Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about causal discovery and some tools for doing that in R. Um, so just to start off, I've brought sort of like a motivational example. It's a research question I've been working on myself, just to show you why causal discovery might be interesting. So the question is, what factors influence the development of dementia, depression, and alcohol abuse? And this is sort of, I think it's a classical kind of research question in epidemiology, because it's something that we cannot really answer with, um, with um, experiments, so we need to rely on observational data. We can't control the world and design some experiments to get the data that answers this question. What we can do is to ask our nice doctor friends to draw a fancy graph for us. Um, so I did that. Um, and this is what came out of it. So just, um, the idea here is that each of the nodes corresponds to some variables and each edge corresponds to a causal link. So for instance here we see that parental social position is supposed to be a cause of education, which causes social position and blah, 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 down to mental disease. This is very nice that we can get these graphs and they give us the foundation of actually doing causal inference on observational data. But it's a little bit annoying for people like us in here that we cannot make these graphs ourselves, right? Because we need to rely on theory and, and other experiments to get the knowledge to put into this graph. So one of the ideas in causal discovery is to ask the question, can we infer these causal models from the data instead of just proposing them from theory? So can we start with our data set and then get out a causal graph? And um, so this is a graph again, the nodes are variables, the edges are causal links. I just want to emphasize that this is a valid mathematical object. It can't be formalized, but for this talk I'm just going to refer to this as some causal model. But you could write it up more formally if you wanted. So the task is to learn this graph from the data. And well, the, that's the question, and the answer is actually yes, sometimes we can. And I feel like I'm seeing some skeptical faces in the crowd here because this feels very controversial the first time you hear it. We've all been told a lot of time that correlation does not imply causation. And I'm not gonna try to argue that it does, I promise. This is not what's happening here. Um, that is a true statement. I even brought this little comic to, to try to win you over again. So we have this guy saying, I used to uh, think correlation implied causation. Then he took a statistic class, so now he doesn't think so. And your friend, his friend says, sounds like the class helps. And he has to say, well, maybe, because he just observes a correlation between attending the statistics class and, and knowing about causality, and he doesn't know if there's a causal link, right? So correlation does not imply causation, but causation actually m might apply correlation. So it might be the other way around. Actually, in fact, you can say that causation does imply some sort of association. Correlation does not come from uh, from, from nowhere. So if you, uh, if you observe a correlation between attending statistics classes and understanding causality correctly, well then one of these three mechanisms must have happened underneath. Either attending statistics classes actually causes you to understand causality correctly, that would be nice, or it could be the other way around, the people who already understand causality correctly like to go to statistics classes, or there could be an unknown factor causing both. But, but it doesn't come from nowhere. So that's the main idea that, that sort of analyzed causal discovery, that if there was causal, the causal mechanisms that were in the data generating mechanism actually leave behind some traces in your data that you might be able to uncover. And this is a very hand wavy um, explanation of like the basic ideas. They're more, um, you, you could be more precise about it, but I, I hope that you get that this is not just magic or people saying that correlation does imply causation. Anyway, so this detective work really is a matter of data analysis. We can look at our data and see what kind of traces the, the causal structures left behind. So when it's data analysis, this is of course something that we can do in R and should do in R. And there are a lot of available packages. Um, I think often when you're introduced to this topic, they focus on a specific um, school of thought in terms of how to understand causal inference and causal modeling. And I've tried to take sort of a little bit different approach, more user-centered. So I wanted to ask what kind of R procedures can you use if you have a given data problem and you want to do causal discovery on it. So of course it depends on what type of data you have, if it's numerical or if it's categorical, if it's mixed. It also depends on what you're willing to assume about your data. It could be a functional form or distributions or linearity, all these kinds of things. 
It also depends on your data size, obviously. Maybe if you have a lot of data, you need methods that um, run faster. Or what, also what is missing in your data. And this could just be like the usual kind of missingness that we heard about in the talk before, but it could also be full variables being missing, so sort of latent variable problems that we heard in, well, the previous talk. And of course, a lot of other properties that you might be interested in. So um, what I've been doing is to look at a, some, a lot of different methods in R. Um, I looked at 24 different procedures from six packages, very nice packages, all of them available on CRAN. And I tried to classify each procedure according to some, some properties that I thought was relevant for, for how people should do or do causal discovery in practice. And then I've provided some minimal code examples running in the same underlying data examples, so it's easy to, to get started and to try out a lot of different procedures. Um, and just to show you why this might be nice, um, so here I just plotted the input formats from my 24 different procedures. You see, half of them take in data frames. That's very nice. That feels very familiar. But the other half takes in something they came up with themselves. And it's, it makes sense within the structure of each package, but if you're switching between packages, it's a little bit difficult to keep track of how to get started. So, so, um, so that's what I'm trying to, to help with. And then a little bit more about this question that you might want to ask. I made a little work cloud here. So the size represents how many of the procedures uh, fulfill that criteria. And you might want to be interested in, in the type of your data, like whether it's numerical, or maybe you want to restrict whether some edges can be there or not if you have some background knowledge you want to include. Or it could also be more, um, more technical assumptions, like the faithfulness assumption that is a causal assumption that you might want to make or not. And um, how better to, uh, to produce your, uh, your uh, results than in a little shiny app. So I put a shiny app here, and I think we should go there and uh, look at it. But just two restrictions for what I, the procedures that I looked at. One is that I only consider methods for observational data, and the other is that I only consider acyclic models, so no loops in the models. But yeah, let's see if we can go there. This is the causal disco. Um, so the idea of this page is basically that you can choose which properties you need to have fulfilled. So let's say we have some numerical data. And then down here, it updates what procedures fulfill those criteria that you choose. So maybe we also want to use something con called constraint-based approach, or we want to have some restrictions and edge presence and blah, blah, blah. We can add and remove uh, assumptions, and we get a little list of what the available procedures are. And then if we click one, let's say we click the first one, then we get a little information page that tells us something about the function and helps us get started with using it. So that's the idea. Um, so of course there's like basic information about the package um, and there's a link to detailed documentation and also to work which article to quote if one is available. I've added some notes of things that I thought was not very easily uh, um, learned from the documentation and then I've provided this little code example um, and all of the code examples do the same thing. They fit the model um, or like the function. Uh, they try to learn the graph uh, as simple as possible. So it's just to show off the syntax. They only include uh, arguments that are uh, mandatory. And then they try to show some kind of summary and if possible, a plot. So if no uh, plot or summary method were uh, available in the package, I've tried to do something to sort of present the, the object. And all the, the code examples are run on the same simulated data examples that are available on, online and described in this about the data tab. Yeah, so that's the idea. And we can just try to um, run a little code example or go for a little code example to, to see what cause of discovery actually does. So this was the PCALC example. I start by just loading some data um, from the web and then um, this PC function in the PC alloc package, it needs to take in something called a sufficient statistic. So that's sort of like a condensed version of your data. If the data is multivariate Gaussian, then a sufficient statistic is the correlation matrix. Um, this is, of course, something you can read in the documentation, but it might also be easier to get started if you can just, well, go ahead and read it in a little causal disco web page. That was my thought. 
Anyway, so here we, we do what's necessary to get the right input structure. And then we fill out the, the arguments that are mandatory. So here you have to put in the labels for some reason. It cannot read it from the data because it doesn't get the data, I guess. And you have to specify an independence test and a significance level. So these choices are not necessarily the best. It's just something that gets it running. And then we get, a, get out some object. And in the PC alc, um, package, they have a plot function, a plot method for this object. So we can see this graph that it learned from our data. So that's rather nice. We can also compare it with the data that it actually came from because this was simulated data, so I do know the data generating mechanism. It looks like this. And if you go ahead and stare at that for, for a long time, I think you might realize that um, all the arrows are, uh, all the edges are the same. The only difference is that here and here we have um, double, ed uh, double ended, double directed arrows in the learned model, but not in the true one. So it actually came very close to the structure that generated this data. Causal discovery actually does work, at least in some cases. But in two, two of the, the relationships here, it doesn't know whether Z is a cause of X1 or X1 is a cause of Z. And the same for X3 and X2. Um, and that's not a bug. That's actually a feature that it shows you this is not learnable from that data. And that's how it, it, it's going to tell you that. But it did find that there was no link between X1 and X2, for instance. So that's rather nice. So this is um, basically the contents of the, the, the causal discount thing. You can try it out for a lot of different um, methods. And I've just added a few directions for future work. And um, if someone's interested in, uh, in adding more ideas to this or collaborating on some, some of it, don't um, hesitate to contact me. I think it could be really cool to use this as an example of trying to put in more like crowdsourcing in our development. I think it could be cool to make it easy for users to tell developers what methods they need that are not available yet. And I think it could be something that we could do in shiny applications like this one. Just let users report what they need and make it easy for developers to get an overview of what are the most needed new features. At least in research, I feel like this is something that we sometimes lack. We get too far away from reality, and we're just developing stuff that nobody uses anyway. Um, so that would be nice. For instance, right now, I haven't been able to find um, any procedures for categorical data with unobserved variables or numerical data with missing information. And, and having this a list available for people who are interested in developing new methods or implementing them could be nice. I also think it could be cool to implement one interface for all the available methods, sort of like a carrot package. Um, I think it requires a lot of thinking because these are not standard R objects somehow. It's unfitted model objects that we're trying to make. So it's not just a matter of, um, of uh, storing a lot of things in, in sort of like usual data sense. And also, it could be really cool if we could um, use like hybrid queries where we combine the different methods for different steps. Yeah. And um, that's all I had. So thank you for listening. Any questions? This one over there. Hello, thank you. Uh, did you try to uh, compare your different, well, the different methods you investigated uh, with a real uh, data set and not a simulated one? Because it's kind of expected that with the simulated data, luckily you find the same kind of pattern, but it's yeah. more complicated when you go back to uh, your original uh, data set. Yeah, that's a good point. So I didn't implement these methods, and they've been validated in, in some sense and um, um, used in real data. So the idea for this was mostly just to show off syntax to make it easy for people to access the methods. I agree that it is a, sort of a problem how to validate these kinds of things, because on real data, we don't know the data generating mechanism often. But I think there could be um, possibilities for collecting data sets, also in sort of a crowdsourcing project, where we could have a collection of different data sets where we didn't know the causal structure, maybe from like agricultural experiments or something like that, where there's no compliance issues, no, no nothing. That'd be really cool, yeah. One more question over there. Uh, 
Hi, th thank you. Um, in the example you presented, um, what's behind the algorithm? Uh, uh, does it perform, uh, does it correct, for instance, for all confounders? Uh, or or does, does it perform mediation analysis in order to understand uh, what is the cause of something, you know? So this, is it this code example you're thinking yeah. of? Yeah. So this is the PC algorithm. Um, it's, a, it's called a constraint-based learning algorithm. So it, it makes, it tries to take advantage of conditional independencies in the data. So it starts off with a fully, um, a fully, uh, full graph, fully connected graph undirected, and it tries to remove edges first. Um, if there is no, um, if you can detect conditional independencies in the data. So the idea is to, to make use of those kind of relationships. And then when it has this sort of little bit sparser graph, then there are some rules for directing edges that can be used. If that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. Maybe just a, a, a quick one. There are also one. other methods that sort of go through a lot of, there are score-based methods that go through different graphs and try to add and remove edges and give them some sort of score that then is supposed to reflect how good a model it is. And thank you. And is it possible to add some expert school knowledge, for instance, like in saying uh, um, that uh, this relationship is in the, that way or? Yeah. So if you go to the causal discount, you can try to allow for external restriction of edge presence. That is, you say that this has to be there. You can also say that you need to um, have edge absence or the direction. So some of the methods implement that and some of them don't. Um, in this specific implementation of the PC algorithm, it's difficult to have the directions. Um, yeah, but there are other ones where it's easier. I think maybe in uh, our chairs, package, be and learn, it is possible, it's down here. They also have a PC stable, and in that one, I think it's possible to do the edge directions. Yeah. Should be possible in PCI as well. My memory fails me at the moment. Not really. Not really. No, you can do it post hoc. Did you say? That's the bad side of having your own implementation. You forget what other implementations can do because yeah. <laughs> you never use them. Uh, any more questions? Okay, then I have one. So, real data, real world data were mentioned earlier, but have you considered the converse of that? So, having uh, integrating in, in the interface a benchmarking of algorithms against, you know, standard reference data sets. Yeah, I think that's the natural next step to actually get this working and also, of course, make it an app where you can actually get outputs and not just information. So I think that's a very good idea. Um, yeah, definitely okay. on the checklist, like to-do list. <laughs>